Hi Hawks fans and welcome. It's a thrill to have with me your new head coach, Lloyd Pierce. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you for having me. This is, I, I was coming over here today to talk to you and I had two numbers stick in my head, 42 and 13. On your 42nd birthday, you shake hands to become the head coach, becoming the 13th head coach in Atlanta Hawks history. Pretty good birthday for That's you. It's not a bad birthday. I think uh, when you couple it with Mother's Day and having my mom in town to celebrate and some of the things we did last night, um, it's been a very busy weekend. It's been an exciting weekend. Uh, There's a lot of fun. And so to celebrate my birthday and my Mother's Day uh, with my mom, my wife, and my sister, been an exciting time. I guess so. I think all Hawks fans want to know first and foremost about you and, and what first attracted you to this opportunity. Well, I think uh, anytime you think of Atlanta, it's a, it's a great city. It's a great city to raise a family. It's a great city to live in. There's a lot of exciting things that's going on in the city. And when you get to the specifics of the team, it's a young roster. And there's a lot of young talent that's currently here and, and looking forward to some of the uh, what will eventually be here through the draft. Um, so at this stage of my career, just leaving Philadelphia and what we've gone through, you know, there's some similarities, there's some differences, but it's a great challenge for me in my career and, and, and what a better place to do it than uh, Atlanta. Well, you talked about Philadelphia, and I think that's the next question that Hawks fans have is, well, what can we expect? What kind of a club do you envision philosophically putting on the floor? It's always going to come through how competitive you are, and uh, it's been our DNA in Philadelphia. It's my DNA as a coach and as a person. Um, you know, you think of sport, you think of basketball, and the first thing you should think of is com competition. Um, you know, we're going to focus on competition. We're going to focus on repetition. Can we create daily habits of competing? Can we create daily habits that are, for us, just trying to win the day? Uh, how much better can we improve? How much better can we focus on individual and team talent? and that growth and uh, you know I think that's the one thing we're looking forward to most. And that personal development theme is something that's really in your DNA from the time you played at Santa Clara. Correct. Uh, you know four years at Santa Clara University under head coach Dick Davey and uh, you know a guy that was really focused on attention to detail. Um, it's carried over to my coaching career when I first started in uh, Cleveland in my first three years it was centered on player development and Really, I just say just trying to get better, helping others get better. And that was the thing I focused on doing. Um, and so it's just, it's, it's gone. It's 11 years now for me in the NBA. And each year I've been focusing myself on trying to get better. And that's just a matter of, are, are you helping others get better? Is it myself? Is it our coaching staff? Is it our players? You mentioned your playing career. Uh, you also played overseas before getting into the coaching aspect of mm -hmm. it. What drove you into coaching, do you think? Uh, again, my coach at college, uh, Dick Davey, you know, I was still playing and in the summer spending a lot of time at Santa Clara University and the more time I spent around the, the players that were still there, you know, one day he just walked up to me and he said, Lloyd, I, I think you have a, a career in coaching. You know, the guys love working with you. You have a passion when you're on the court. Um, there's an energy that you give and you know whenever you're done playing whenever that time is I'll, I'll create an opportunity for you to come coach that's the first time I ever thought about coaching and for those here in the south and in the east Dick Davies as good as it gets in West Coast basketball is a legend out there at Santa Clara. correct correct he spent uh, really over 30 years at Santa Clara University half of it as an assistant the other half as a head coach and just a, a true gentleman, uh, great character, really cared about his players, a lot of passion into the game, a lot of respect and credibility amongst his peers. Of course, Dick is so proud of you uh, to be becoming the head coach of the Hawks and getting this opportunity. But what made you flip from college to the pros? What was that like? Um, you know, there was an opportunity that presented itself in Cleveland. Uh, they were... They had just opened up their new facility and they were looking to expand their player development role. We had some common connections. Coach Mike Brown, uh, assistant GM Chris Grant uh, were two guys that knew uh, another head coach and Randy Bennett who recruited me and their University of San Diego connection brought us all together. Different opportunity, different challenge, obviously being at the highest level in basketball is the NBA. And when the opportunity presented itself for me to work training camp and uh, when Mike Brown presented me an offer to uh, stay with the team, 
something I couldn't turn down. It was an opportunity I thought was both exciting and challenging, and uh, it's been great ever since. You mentioned Dick, of course. Who were some of the other coaching influences that guided you? Yeah, Mike Brown, obviously, is the first coach that gave me an opportunity to work in the NBA. I spent three years there in Cleveland. Uh, a man who was a young coach at the time as well, um, you know, the, the years he had in Cleveland, but really focused on attention to detail. They were a championship program. They had just come off their run against San Antonio in the finals, and they were trying to continue and sustain that championship uh, caliber team. And, uh, you know, I learned a lot, a lot about the details of just trying to keep an organization together and compete for a championship on a yearly basis. Uh, I spent time with Keith Smart in Golden State, mm -hmm. who, if you know Keith, you know his personality, walks into the gym every morning with a smile on his face. Uh, great character, great family man, uh, but loved his players and the players loved playing for him. Lionel Hollins, I spent two years with in Memphis. Um, kind of a no-nonsense, tell you how it is, mm -hmm. uh, but very respectable coach. Uh, he's been around the game for a long time, both as a player and a coach. He's got a lot of stories, a lot of information, and uh, you know, just coaches the game the way it needs to be coached. And then lastly, with Brett Brown in, in Philadelphia, having spent the last five years with him, his passion, his energy, his vision of how to build a program from the start to the finish. Uh, you know, obviously our run this past year, a lot of people are celebrating and talking about, but we started that five years ago. And a lot of that was with his vision, his passion, his energy that he brought to the gym every day. You've mentioned Golden State, and of course that's the connection that Hawks fans link you and Travis together from. Take us back to that year you spent with the Warriors. Yeah, so we spent a year together, um, obviously knowing Travis that year and, and, and kind of in the, the uh, transition between new ownership. The, the new ownership had taken over in that same year, and Travis had been part of the old regime and stayed on, um, which shows a lot about him and his pedigree and what he's done in his profession. But that was our first connection, and uh, you know we got to spend a lot of time. I stayed on all the way up until the draft workouts before moving on. But uh, that's how we first came together and in contact with one another, and we just maintained that relationship over the years. And then, of course, that relationship now becomes one here in Atlanta, a partnership. Correct. Uh, you and your general manager now going forward to lead this franchise back. Yeah, I look forward to it. Uh, obviously having a lot of years, he knows my background, I know his background. Uh, the communication that we've had over the years is uh, what we're going to rely on, just being able to communicate with one another, try and uh, pair our thoughts, uh, communicate our thoughts on a consistent basis, and uh, build a championship program from day one. For the last five years, you've been coming to Atlanta as an assistant coach with the Sixers, taking a look at a game plan to try to stop the Hawks. What did you see from the outside uh, as an assistant game planning for Atlanta? And, hey, I get these guys now. What's going through your mind I there? I think the specifics of how Atlanta has played uh, all results, it all starts with the, the ball movement. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they've done a great job of sharing the basketball, and, and they've done that pretty much throughout the year. They've had some roster turnover, but the consistency is they've shared the basketball. Uh, it's, a, it's a hard team to, to scout because uh, it's equal opportunity on the offensive end. And then defensively, they've competed. You know, we played the guys three years, this, three times this year, and every game was, was a dogfight. And uh, you respect that, especially with a young roster. You expect their competitiveness. You expect their togetherness on the offensive end. So there's some things that are in place that are exciting, both offensively and defensively. You just want to try and build on that. Well, Lloyd Pierce, now it's your ball club. And you take over today as the head coach of the Hawks. Sir, congratulations. Thank you. Welcome to Atlanta for you and your family. It's a great day in Hawks history and all the best. This city will embrace you with open arms. I appreciate it and look forward to it.